Hey, this is Shane with BitBison, and uh, today we're going to carry on with the player controller tutorial, uh, showing you how to use uh, audio with your player controller and uh, how to use a few animations if you have to. So, if you're trying to follow along with this tutorial without uh, completing the previous tutorial, I suggest that you go and do that because it's going to, it's going to be uh, <clears throat> information that proceeds from that tutorial, and you might not be able to follow along. But if you have, uh, let's let's get started. So what we have so far is uh, we have uh, our cube character moving along, uh, quest keeper style, with uh, continuous movement, continuous walk actually. And uh, let's change this to a discrete jump movement style. And what we have now is we have our player our cube player jumping around on the scene. Let's give him a shadow to make things uh, slightly more visually appealing. So I have my shadows over here under common texture. Let's take a square shadow and drop that in right there. Let's make it black. exactly is my shadow right now. All right. I've got this square shadow uh, which is here it can be at zero and can have a rotation of so 90 degrees, a little above the surface. Scale that up. Scale it up some more. Drop it down a bit. And we have our shadow. Now, let's have a look at this. It's too dark. Let's turn that to something like that. That should be better. Now we have our shadow. Let's apply and see what we get. So now what we have is is that it looks a lot better. The character looks placed. Um, let's get back to the audio now. Now every time this character jumps, I want uh, to play uh, some audio that goes along with the jump. And the way I do that is I, uh, you see these two fields over here, walk sound and jump sound. So I pick the sound I want for one of those effects. And in my case, I'm going to use this pop sound over here. And I assign that to the jump sound. And I should have some audio in there now. So that's how you do audio. If you have uh, an interesting walk sound, you can go ahead and put that in as well. Um, for uh, when the character is walking, I haven't been able to find a decent walk sound, so I haven't actually put one in. Um, but I'm sure it works just fine. Um, so now the next thing we want to do is uh, animate the character a little bit, uh, give him an idle animation and maybe a walk animation. So let's open up the animation window. Um, my animation window is taking some time to open up. All right, there it is. And let us make this a little smaller so that we can see everything on the scene. And uh, let's create an idle animation. Save it in the temp folder that you've just created. Idle. And uh, for my idle animation, I'm just going to have uh, the player scale up and down. So what I need to do is, uh, ooh, I didn't want, yeah, got. Got my animation on the wrong object. Yeah, 
my animation is not supposed to be on my character root it's supposed to be on my character base object because that's what contains my animator so let's do that again let's delete uh, the animation I just created let's select my character base open up the animation window and create a new animation it's called my new animation idle and uh, for my idle animation I just want the cube to scale up and down so its position is going to be set and its scale is going to be set and at halfway point I change its scale a little bit on the y-axis and I change its position correspondingly and so what I should have is that, which is my idle animation, and that's fine. Now let's create a walk animation. And my walk animation is not going to be very interesting. It's just going to be the character back to his base position. So for my walk animation, all I'm going to do is set uh, a marker for position and uh, set a marker for scale. So my walk animation is just basically going to be that. Nothing great. Uh, now that we have our two animations, I select my character root. And I enter the name of the animations over here. Where it says idle animation, I just enter idle. Because that's the name of my idle animation. And then I enter walk for my walk animation. And I should be good to go. I get my idle animation here, and then when the player jumps, he moves back to his idle animation. Now to see what it looks like when the player is going to be walking, I switch to uh, continuous walks. And have my idle animation, and then when the character moves, switches to his walk animation. And when he stops, he switches to his idle animation. So. Animations can obviously be way more complicated and complex, and that's up to you. But uh, after the animation is created, uh, incorporating it into your player controller is relatively simple. So that's all for this tutorial, and uh, I'll catch you in the next tutorial.